In today's lecture, we will see the IPv4 unicast, multicast, and broadcast address. We will start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to understand the different ways host can communicate using IPv4 address. Let's start with the different ways that a host can communicate using IPv4 address. There are basically three different ways. In an IPv4 network, the host can communicate on of the three different ways. The three different ways are unicast, broadcast, and multicast. Let's start with unicast. In a unicast transmission, we know it is the process of sending a packet from one host to an individual host, and the sender is going to send the data to exactly one host, that is, only one destination host. So, in this example, let's say there is a source, that is, it is 172.16.4.1. So, this is the source computer. And this source computer is going to send the data to exactly one destination, which is 172.16.4.253. So here, the destination address is a unicast address. So after getting the data from the application layer, transport layer, then in the network layer, this host has to encapsulate the IP header, where the IP header will have source IP address and the destination IP address. So this computer, when a packet is created, it puts this address as the source IP address and it will put this IP address as the destination IP address. In this case, the transmission is a unicast transmission. Why? Because the destination address is a unicast address. And coming to the next type, which is the broadcast transmission, where the process of sending a packet from one host to all hosts in the network. In a broadcast transmission, if a sender is sending a packet, Except the sender, all others will be receiving this packet. And that's why this transmission is called as a broadcast transmission. Basically, we have two types of broadcast transmission. Number one, it is a limited broadcast. And number two, it is the directed broadcast. So, in a limited broadcast, the destination IP address will be 255.255.255.255. When a computer is sending this broadcast, Everyone in this local area network will be receiving this broadcast, including the default gateway, that is the router. But the router will not forward this broadcast anymore. So that's what it is mentioned here. The routers do not forward a limited broadcast. Let's see an example. In this example, let this be the source computer, which is 172.16.4.1. So we know this is the source computer. This source computer uses the destination IP address as 255.255.255.255. So when this computer sends a broadcast by using 255.255.255.255 as the destination IP address, everyone participating in this network will be receiving this broadcast. Even this router will be receiving, but this router will not forward this broadcast anymore. And this is the limited broadcast. And coming to directed broadcast, this directed broadcast is depending upon the network. This is an example directed broadcast. 172.16.4.255. We will see. The hosts within 172.16.4.0 slash 24 network will be receiving this broadcast. What do you mean by this? Slash 24 means it's class C. In a class C, the first three octets is reserved for the network portion, right? So the first three octets are reserved. That is 172.16.4 is reserved. So the starting address in this subnet will be 172.16.4.0, which is the starting IP address. And what about the last IP address? which is 172.16.4.255. We know 0 and 255 will not be used. We have already seen this elaborately in the previous lectures. The first IP address in the network will be the network address and the last IP address will be the broadcast address. So this is an example directed broadcast address. And coming to the last transmission, which is the multicast transmission. We know in a multicast transmission, it is the process of sending a packet from one host to a selected group of hosts, possibly in different networks. It means it is not going to send the packet to all the participants. Rather, it is going to send this information to a group of participants or some selected participants. Broadcast always floods the network, whereas multicast transmissions reduces the traffic. We have already seen in the classes of IP address that there is a separate class. Class D is for multicast purpose. And what is the address range? The multicast address range is from 224.0.0.0 to 239.255.255.255. So if the first octet is between 224 and 239, it is class D. Class D means it's multicast address. 
and I will give you an example link local multicast address from 224.0.0.0 to 224.0.0.255. Let's take there are two routers and these two routers has a link. These link local addresses are used for exchanging some specific information. For example, the routing information exchanged by routing protocol. Say if two routers are going to communicate with each other. So information about routing protocols are going to be exchanged between routers. So these addresses are used for that purpose. And that's why they are called as link local address. No worries if you are hearing this term first time here routing protocols. Anyway, we are going to deal with routing and routing protocols elaborately in this chapter. And we also have some globally scoped addresses which ranges from 224.0.1.0 to 238.255.255.255. For example, there is an exclusive IP address which is 224.0.1.1 has been reserved for NTP that is network time protocol. Network time protocols are used to synchronize the clocks in the devices. Say if I go and manually assign the time in a device, then it will not be 100% accurate. Rather, if I place an NTP server that is the network time protocol server and if I ask all the devices in my network to talk to the NTP server and get or synchronize their clocks, so that will be accurate. So manual assignment of time will always be not 100% accurate. Automatic assignment of time or automatic synchronization of clocks in the devices that will be always advisable. So this is an example globally scoped addresses. I hope now you understood the different ways the host can communicate using IPv4 address. I hope you guys enjoyed the lecture and thank you for watching.